I'm Ryan Boyd. Me and my wife, Glorianne, are avid hunters and outdoorsmen. We also own a nuisance wildlife removal company. We have a deep respect for all wildlife and are passionate about conservation and helping people get out of the house or office and reconnect with our wild roots, which is how we believe God created us to live. We always have our hands full dealing with some kind of critter, so please join us and get ready. It's a wild life. All right, here we are. We're in the Florida Everglades, and this is home to one of the biggest snakes in the world, the Burmese python. Burmese pythons have taken over the Florida Everglades. They eat anything and everything that can fit in their mouth. Florida Wildlife Commission estimates there to be between 30,000 and 300,000 pythons in the Everglades, but no one knows for sure. They have been catastrophic to our native wildlife, and even with significant control efforts, we believe the python population is still on the rise. All right, guys, we are super excited. We're going to meet Kevin and Chris. They work with Gator Boys Alligator Rescue, and apparently they've got some good spots. This will be, I believe, our fourth time, fourth trip, actually going out and trying to get pythons. We've looked for hours and hours and hours, and um, they're just tough to find. There's plenty of them out here, but it's 1.6 million acres of Everglades, and that's look, like looking for a needle in a thousand haystacks. Not to mention that needle's camouflaged to look like hay. Uh, these snakes are camouflaged, and a lot of times they'll be right there in the grass, and they're just they're so camoed you just can't see them. And we're here with uh, I don't know if you can see his face; it's covered for your protection. But that's uh, Gator Boys Chris, and uh, Kevin is on the phone with FWC, getting everything set up, and we're getting ready to roll. And we've got Glory in here. We're hoping to get on some pythons, so hoping to have a lot of action. It's a beautiful day, and these snakes should be out laying in the sun, trying to stay warm. So hopefully we have some action, so stick with us. All right, you can see why this is such a great hiding spot for these Burmese pythons. This Everglades is completely impenetrable. I have to fold the sawgrass and marsh grass out of the way to be able to see where I'm going. So these snakes definitely have the upper hand. There's no way we can find them in this stuff. So that's why we have to search these levees. And searching these levees is only probably 0.0001% of the entire Everglades. So we're looking for pythons, no luck yet. This is actually our, probably I think our fourth attempt looking for pythons. We went out three nights and all night long um, until the wee hours of the morning, like four or five o'clock in the morning. Saw a lot of different native species of snakes, but no pythons, but uh, we're, we've been riding, I guess for about four or five miles now and uh, no luck yet, but we're, we've got high hopes. We feel, feel good about today. Python, Python! We'll be here to back you up if you need it. Go for it. He's aware of you. There they are. There he is. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Here we go, baby! Woo! 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 We're here in the Everglades and there's that musk. <laughs> I've been waiting to get musked on by a big Burmese python. <laughs> We're in the wild, guys. This is, what, about a nine footer? Eight yeah. nine footer? Maybe Not a little bigger. Get a nice meal. Super thick. And we've been riding for probably about an hour now. <laughs> and uh, this is our fourth trip out here to the Everglades. But man, you weren't, you weren't joking. You look and you look and you look and all of a sudden, there they are just laying there. This is a beautiful, beautiful snake. Burmese python wants to get a bite out of me. <laughs> but man, this is so awesome. I'm loving it. Woo! Good stuff. <laughs> Glad to get you out here, man. All right, I'm gonna turn him loose now. I know what's in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me just check quick and see what we got. That's a female. Female? Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't go by people's first names. I go by their YouTube channels. Right here with Snakeaholic and Florida's <laughs> Wildest. You guys go give them, the, give them a follow. Subscribe to their YouTube channel for more content like this. We're out here in the wild of Florida, in the Everglades, as wild as it gets. There's different versions of wild. But I don't think there's anything more wild than the Florida Everglades. Yeah, man. And this is proof. All right, you guys. Python is on the menu today. I never thought I would say that, but we just got our python back. So this was caught on state property. So it was turned into FWC already, got tagged, did whatever they do to the pythons that are caught. 
and there is, as you can see, a lot of meat to work with. So we're gonna try it three different ways. So first off, we really just wanna genuinely taste what python tastes like. So we're just gonna sear it, salt and pepper, very little seasoning, just sear it up, see how it tastes. We're gonna make jerky, because that just sounded pretty good, python jerky, and then a spicy Everglades stew is what we're calling it. So hopefully that one will turn out pretty good. All right, so we didn't really know what to expect, but it appears that most of the meat is actually on the outside and the skeleton is in the middle, so we're gonna attempt to just fillet it similar to a fish. As we started cleaning, there's actually like a tough membrane like in on the top of the skin, similar to like the silver, the silver skin and like a deer when you're cleaning it that you have to kind of cut through and it's actually almost too tough for our knives to cut through. So we got just a little bit to work with, at least something manageable. So all we have here is just salt and pepper. Got my olive oil hot. We're just gonna saute it, see how it tastes. Alive. <laughs> Looking good. Smelling good. So it actually smells a lot like fish. Like how, when you saute fish, that's the aroma I am getting right now. So not too so bad. And they're super crispy. I love anything crispy. So we will find out. All right, we've given it a few minutes to cool. So I am gonna take the first plunge here. Which one should I choose? Let's choose this one. Okay. Definitely chewy. So I think for our next recipe, we might need to pound it a little bit. So it's very bland. Not, not too pungent of a taste of, of anything. It's very mild. I mean, I know I just salt and peppered it, but Ooh, that one's a good one. <laughs> a crispy. But really, I mean, not much flavor to it. So I feel like it would take on whatever marinade or seasoning you do. So I'm excited to try some of these other recipes we're gonna do. So this is a Burmese python, fresh caught in the Florida Everglades. And I've, I've talked to people that say they've heard of people eating python and just the common denominator is tough from what we hear but I've never actually talked to somebody that's eaten python themselves. So very curious, very excited to try it. Here we go. So it's got that charred, that really nice seared flavor on the outside, so that's good. All we did is salt and pepper this, throw it in the olive oil, because we wanted to really taste the flavor of the meat. But it tastes like fish a little bit. Um, actually kind of a lot tastes like fish to me that's really good though it's a little bit chewy it's not too chewy I don't mind a little bit chewy it's actually better than I expected to be honest and now I kind of want to go catch another one we have plenty of meat here <laughs> we've got nine feet of it it is very difficult to clean but surprisingly good <laughs> I mean, the flavor is, there's, there's no off-putting flavor at all. Very mild, slightly tastes like fish, like a very mild fish, but just definitely firmer than fish. It's really good. Awesome. <laughs> Who would've thought? Up next is gonna be my attempt at a spicy Everglades python stew. So what we're gonna do, take our, I kinda tried to, I chopped up the python into like little bite-sized cubes, the smaller the better. And I'm just gonna saute this, just like we did the other stuff. Cook that up. And then I have already pre-chopped our onions, garlic, potatoes, and we actually had a couple turnips from our uncle's garden that I, I didn't have enough potatoes, so I figured I'd throw those in there. So that's my little spin on that. And then I've got six cups of, of chicken broth. So once this is done sauteing, we're just gonna throw it all into one pot and let it cook low and slow for at least an hour. But I'm sure the longer the better to get it nice and tender. So. Alrighty, so this looks about ready to transfer out so we can start cooking our onions. Let's go ahead and add in our onions and garlic. So this is a whole medium onion and then four garlic cloves that I have pre-chopped. Just saute till they're brown and kind of translucent. 
All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and add our six cups of chicken broth. We got our broth. We're gonna add our meat back to this pot. Put that back in there. Ooh. <laughs> this is our python meat we're adding back to the stew. And then I've got a couple potatoes and turnips chopped. Those will go nicely. And then our seasonings. So this is a tablespoon of cumin. I've got a teaspoon of Himalayan salt, and then just a dash of white pepper, depending on how spicy you want it. You can add more or less. And then a can of diced green chilies. All right, so you're gonna stir this up, let it come to a simmer, and then you're gonna cover it and let it simmer for at least an hour, or another variation would be just throw it into a crock pot and let it cook all day. Because I feel like cooking the python the longer the better, in terms of, you know, for a lot of reasons to make it more tender, and then also just to soak up all the flavors, and to make sure it's cooked fully. All right, so while this is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and start pounding out my other python meat, add it to the marinade to get ready for our jerky. So we're not using anything fancy, just regular teriyaki pineapple marinade that I found at the store. So we're gonna try, just pour this in here, and. Let it marinate and soak up some flavor for our jerky. That's probably good. So we'll probably let this marinate overnight to really get all the good flavor and stick it on the dehydrator first thing tomorrow morning. All right, so we decided to put the python stew in the crock pot overnight because it was too late last night to eat it. So we're having it for lunch today. So the guys have been working out here and figured I'd bring them out a bowl and we're gonna try some python Everglades stew it with some cilantro, some fresh cilantro and fresh oregano. And then I just put a dollop of sour cream and a little bit of cheese. So it's kind of like a Southwestern take on it. So really good. Sorry, that one doesn't look pretty. That one's prettier. Go to that one. <laughs> We're letting our guests try the, the, the... All right, so I came out here to help them with the fence and uh, I'm ready to try some Python Everglades stew. Let's try the first bite. I never had Python before. I'm excited. What all is in here, Glory? So we've got the Python. We've got potatoes. That's really good. Turnips. Did you get some meat in that bite? I did, it. yeah. So there's that python right there. Oh yeah. And then a can of green chilies. Actually, I ended up putting two cans of green chilies and one in a little spicier. And then like seasonings like cumin, salt. So it's got a little bit of chew to it, kind of like a, um, kind of like a- Gator tail, right? Yeah, kind of like a gator tail. Good flavor though, real good seasoning. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a big piece right there. Mm -hmm. It, um, it's delicious. Yeah, just like gator tail, but a little yeah. bit different. That's really yeah, good, boy. Good. Thank you. Like yeah, we still have jerky to check on. I put that in the dehydrator this morning, so we'll check on that later this evening, and we'll try out our jerky. All right, it's just time to check on our jerky. So I've had the python in here for 12 hours at 160. I really wanted to make sure it was done, so let's check on it. So definitely it looks like it's done. It's pretty hard and crispy, so let's, let's see. Okay, um, let's try a different piece. <laughs> it's a little chewy. Hmm. Let's, this thinner piece looks a little bit better. Okay. So that's not bad, it's thin. So you can actually chew through it. The thicker one, not so much. So overall with our recipes, I would say the Everglades Python Stew is my absolute favorite. If you fed it to anyone at a party, didn't tell them what was in it, they would never know it was Python. They'd probably think you were, they were eating beef. So that's by far my top recommendation if you try any of these recipes. The saute would probably be second. It was just a mild fishy flavor. The jerky, hit or miss. You just wanna make sure you cut it really, really thin before you do jerky is my recommendation. So overall, Python was way better than we expected. If it wasn't so tedious and hard to clean, we'd probably do a lot more of it, but we don't like to kill anything and not eat it. We don't wanna waste any of the meat, so that's why we cooked it up for you. So we encourage you to do the same. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, stay wild.